Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're gonna to be making our own wallpaper. So quick story, I actually wanted to make this video like at the end of last year, I started filming making my own wallpaper in another part of my house, but like an idiot, I completely destroyed and accidentally deleted all the footage that I had for that. I was originally thinking about doing it in this room, but I thought that it would be a really fun project. I am currently in the process of renovating my um, little, it's gonna be like an apothecary store room kind of thing, and I am going for like Victorian Gothic Vampire Liar meets Moulin Rouge. I thought it would be perfect to kind of make this Victorian Gothic wallpaper and paint it by hand because I'm crazy and I'm always down for a creative project. So obviously the very first step was to paint this wall red. Started off white and I had to remove obviously all the fixtures, light switches, all that fun stuff, put on my painting tape and get to painting. So I chose two red shades. Um, I wanted it to be very dark and kind of moody, but very warm and rich. So the first shade is kind of obviously a little lighter. The second shade is a darker red, which actually has Victorian in the name of it. I can't remember the exact name, but I thought that was totally perfect. So while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, let's move on to designing our pattern. So the very first thing I do with any project, I always create a Pinterest mood board. So I was just kind of looking through my pins to try to see if there's kind of some inspiration, ideas I can have for pattern shapes and all the design and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I am not wanting to copy at all any other patterns and try to create something new, but I'm trying to like familiarize myself with certain kind of movements and shapes that are very common in Victorian Gothic patterns. So after I do that, I kind of just have my sketchbook and I started to kind of play around with certain shapes, certain things I thought would be really cool. And as I was drawing all these different kind of thoughts and on my notepad, it kind of just opens the floodgates for creativity and different thoughts and inspirations to come. And then I started kind of playing around with the thought of kind of making some of the shapes look kind of feather-like, which I think kind of just would be really fun. Now, after I have some basic ideas, I actually popped into Adobe Illustrator to draw out everything that I'm kind of thinking. I essentially just use the pen tool. I kind of adjusted the settings so it smooths it so it doesn't come out super jagged the way that it actually is being drawn because I'm using my trackpad. And essentially with every shape that I made, I would just go and reflect that shape so that I can have it doubled on the other side to avoid extra work. The whole process didn't take too long to do. I, once I kind of get in the creative zone, it kind of starts to flow a little bit more naturally. Whenever I feel stuck, I always take a break. I feel like that's like my rule of thumb for creativity. And I apologize here for my really glitchy, horrible looking uh, video recording of my screen. I was just using like the Apple you know, whatever default thing. And I feel like I have to try to find an app or something that does this because in the future, if I do anything else, this was pretty bad. But I just wanted to show you a little bit of the process of how it kind of looks like to kind of play around in Illustrator and try to figure things out. So I'm having to measure all the area that I have to make this pattern. It's a little complicated because essentially I have uh, two wall spaces and a door that I'm going to be painting and they are all different widths and different lengths and I have to basically you know make sure everything looks good and symmetrical and so everything flows there's also trim in between the door and the wall and I have to you know figure out how to make sure that things kind of look continuous even though it's not going to be So after I have measured everything, I can then calculate how big each pattern piece has to be on the wall. And I kind of did this by creating a grid in Illustrator so that I can kind of have an actual measurement. I created blocks that reflected the walls and the door and made sure that inch by inch it worked. I try to double check and triple check, make sure everything is super symmetrical and even so I kind of make sure that I am not going to run into any other issues. One issue that I had to kind of think through was having a door and a pattern makes things a little bit more complicated because doors have a little bit of an indent in them. And so I was kind of playing around with different options of what I should do and what might look good. Should I just paint the inside of the different quadrants of the door? Should I just paint the outside? Should I do both and just completely blank kind of the little indented piece and that's kind of what I ended up trying to do and deciding on because I thought it would look the most cohesive with the entire wall. 
So now after I know the exact size that each piece of the pattern has to be, I can go ahead and make my template. So I'm not a fancy person when it comes to trying to, you know, my tools and such. I just grab whatever I have around. So I took a paper bag from my groceries. I kind of had to tape it together because it was too small but essentially I just made sure it was the perfect size I made sure there was like an inch border around everything so obviously I'm not creating the pattern all the way to the very edge and then I just took my image of the single pattern piece that I need and I created a JPEG out of it, put it on my iPad and kind of tried to do a little shadow box situation. I didn't show this part because I had to go into my laundry room and turn off all the lights and <laughs> attempt to get a proper drawing from my iPad. This was really challenging because obviously I'm using like a paper bag which is kind of a little thicker. Um, also, I just, it drives me crazy because every time I touch the iPad it flips out and it changes the size and having to do this on such a big pattern where I have to com you know, continuously readjust, readjust. It just took a while and I had to kind of at some points just set it to the side and kind of freehand some parts of it. Part of obviously going into this, I know that a human is making it, not a machine. And so it's not going to be a perfect wallpaper the way that maybe it would be if you were to buy something from the store. But I think it kind of gives a little bit of character, or at least that's what I'm telling myself to make myself feel better about the fact that there is going to be imperfections and that's inevitable. So I decided to only do the center part of the pattern and one of the feathery sides just because I can easily just move my piece of paper around instead of having to cut out and draw because I was already having a hard time with it um, three more times and risk there being more unevenness and I just didn't want to waste time. I thought it was easy enough just to flip my paper when I'm on the wall tracing. And then I can start applying my template and tracing out the pattern which is a very tedious process. I opted for uh, going back and forth between drawing and then painting because I thought I'd probably want to jump off a cliff if I just had to trace that for and honestly painting some part of this pattern was kind of difficult. I had to like contort myself to be able to paint at the very very bottom most parts. It was also a little bit more challenging doing it on the sides where there was there was either like a wood panel or something that didn't allow me to trace things super flat but I got it done. I also wanted to make sure that this didn't look like a solid color when I painted it. And so I thinned the paint just a little bit with a little bit of water to make sure that I could kind of almost do like layers so that you'd kind of just like when you normally paint and things don't look super opaque every single stroke, there's some volume and definition and there's darker points and lighter points. And I thought that'd make things look a little bit more elegant and lighter rather than this like clunky solid colored pattern. Now after I finished the first panel I moved on to the door which was pretty challenging in and of itself obviously because of all like the divots. I made sure to try to skip everything but again because I'm not working with a flat surface tracing was a little bit more time consuming but at this point because I'd already been doing this pattern so much I kind of already started to like you know memorize how things are supposed to look and that kind of made it so I didn't have to like be super perfect with my stencil I kind of already knew where things were gonna go and things started moving faster and faster Midway through, I started to kind of like think like, you know what, there's a bunk bed in this room that I always planned on removing, but I was like totally spaced on the fact that there's probably more wall where the bunk bed is. And I was like, well, in order to fully have the pattern on all every bit of the wall, I have to remove the bunk bed. Now I would have loved to film this for you, but this room is quite small. And the fact that my husband and I, I feel like we almost like lost our lives trying to get that bunk bed down from there. The thing was so heavy. It was super high, like much taller than each, either of us. So we were standing on ladders and holding it on our shoulders and trying our very best to get that thing down. We had to saw it out of the room because it was too big to even move out of the room. And so camera in there was just like a no-go. But it was such a cool feeling to finally have 
that kind of out of the room and see all the way towards the top. It, our house is very angular, so I have a nice kind of vaulted ceiling in here. Even though the room is small, it kind of just makes it feel a little bit more open just to have that. Um, so I had to go and remove this kind of tapestry blanket thing that was kind of nailed to the top. And there was some lattice on the other side, so it kind of like opens up into the living room, which is really nice because there's a really big window in here, and so it adds even more light out there. I painted that up with some more paint to go into the store and get some more, and then continue just to bring my pattern upwards. And after many weeks of hard work and effort, I finally have my Victorian Gothic wallpaper. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe to this channel if you like creative things, and stay tuned because I have a lot of really cool content coming. Next week I have a new project. I'm gonna have a project every week after that, so I hope that you'll join along and I will see you in my next video. Bye.